Okay, so are we on the verge of creating like the ultimate brain? You know, one that leaves our own in the dust. That's what we're diving into today. Artificial intelligence is changing everything, isn't it? Yeah. But how fast is too fast? Right. And are we ready for what comes next? That's what we're trying to figure out. And to help us unpack all of this, we're taking a deep dive into a pretty intense report. Situational awareness, it's called. R written by Leopold Aschenbrenner. And this guy knows his stuff, let me tell you. No stranger to AI, that's for sure. He spent years in those top secret AI labs. Yeah, the ones you're thinking of. And when he talks about where AI is headed, people pay attention. Big time. And get this. Ashenbrenner believes we are on the precipice of AGI, artificial general intelligence. As in AI that can think and learn on par with, if not better than, humans. And he's not talking about some far off future either. He thinks it could happen as soon as 2027. That's, what, three years from now? Yeah, and he says that once we hit AGI, things are going to get really wild really fast. He calls it an intelligence explosion. Basically, AI starts improving itself at an insane rate. So it's like AI goes into overdrive. Exactly. We're talking AI that's exponentially smarter than us, like off-the-charts intelligent. Which, as you can imagine, comes with some pretty big questions. I mean, what happens if we create something that's way smarter than us? And how do we even begin to control that? Right. So Ashenbrenner breaks down this journey to AGI in a really interesting way. And it all comes down to something he calls effective compute. Think of it like this. Imagine you've got a race car. Compute power is the engine size. The bigger the engine, the more horsepower you have to work with. Okay, I'm with you. Now, algorithmic efficiency is like having a super slick gearbox, right? It's about making the most of every bit of that raw power. So you're squeezing more intelligence out of the same amount of computing power. Exactly. Now, for the cool part, unhobbling gains. This is like taking all those limitations off the car, no more speed limits, no more traffic lights, just pure potential. And that's what Ashenbrenner thinks we're on the verge of doing with AI unlocking its full potential. Precisely. Right now, AI models like, say, GPT-4, impressive as they are, they're still kind of confined. We give them a prompt. They give us a response. They're running a sprint when they're actually capable of a marathon, you know. Just, we're holding AI back. In a way, yes. What Ashenbrenner is talking about is removing those constraints, giving AI the ability to work on problems for longer periods, to synthesize information, to mm. strategize, like giving it the keys to the library and saying, go explore, go discover. And he calls this unlocking, what was it, test time compute. Exactly. It's like we're giving AI the keys to the kingdom and saying, go nuts, figure it out. But it's not just about giving AI more time to think, right? Right. There's another piece to this puzzle, and it's maybe the most mind-blowing part of all this. Hit me with it. Okay. So remember how we were talking about how quickly AI is advancing? Like, remember GPT-2? Yeah, it was a big deal at the time, but kind of basic, really. Exactly. It was like a toddler learning to talk. Now think about GPT-4, just four years later. Night and day, right. Totally. GPT-4 is writing code, composing music, even acing those standardized tests. Ashenbrenner describes it as like a really smart high schooler. So in four years, AI went from toddler to like almost college ready. That's the thing. And it's not just GPT. We're seeing this insane progress across the board. Like Ashenbrenner talks about this thing called the math data set. Basically, it's a collection of ridiculously hard math problems. The kind that would give even a math whiz a headache. Oh, yeah, definitely. And when this math data set first came out, the experts, they thought it would be years, maybe even decades before AI could tackle these problems. Don't leave me hang. So in just one year, AI went from solving like 5% of these problems to over 50%. And now the most advanced models are scoring over 90%. No way. Beating out the humans. Crushing it. And look, math is one thing, but it's happening everywhere. We're seeing AI create incredible art, write music, even scripts. Stuff you literally can't tell was written by a machine. It's both amazing and kind of terrifying, you know? Yeah. Like, where does it stop? That's the question, right? And that's where this idea of the intelligence explosion comes in. Ashenbrenner says, imagine a million AI researchers all working 24-7 but operating 10 maybe even a hundred times faster than any human could. Okay, so AI starts designing and improving itself at lightning speed. And the rate of progress, it just explodes. This is how we get to super intelligence AI that's not just smarter than us, but unimaginably smarter. Okay, now we're talking about AI that's basically, well, alien. You yeah. can't even comprehend it. So what's the game plan? How do we even begin to deal with that? That's the billion dollar question. And Ashenbrenner, he doesn't sugarcoat it. 
He says, our current approaches to AI safety, they're totally inadequate for what's coming. Like, we're bringing a squirt gun to a five-alarm fire. Worse. He compares it to the Manhattan Project. Wait, the atomic bomb? You're serious. He says the stakes are that high, maybe even higher. Because with superintelligence, the potential for things to go wrong, it's huge. And we have no idea how to control something that's so much smarter than us. Exactly. Ashenbrenner says we need a whole new level of global cooperation, some kind of oversight, something we've never seen before. So this isn't just a tech problem anymore. It's like a whole humanity problem. 100%. And Ashenbrenner predicts by 2027, 2028, we're going to see a massive shift. He calls it the project. The project? What's that? Imagine, like, the best AI researchers in the world, all brought together, working in secret, governments pouring billions, maybe even trillions, into this. It sounds like something out of a movie, a really intense movie. Yeah. But why all the secrecy? Because the stakes are that high. This project, as he calls it, it's our attempt to, like, harness the power of superintelligence before it's too late. Before it gets away from us. Before it even occurs to it to get away from us. That's a lot, right? A government-led AI project with, like, the fate of humanity writing on it. When I started digging into all of this, I thought I'd be blown away by the tech, you know? Sure, the algorithms, the processing power. Yeah, all of that. But honestly, it's the potential impact on, well, us that's really stuck with me. It's impossible to ignore. Ashenberg, he doesn't shy away from it. He says we're kind of sleepwalking into a future with super intelligence. He even compares it to, get this, the early days of the pandemic. Whoa, okay. How so? He says it's like, back then, we knew something was coming, something big, but we didn't really grasp the magnitude of it until it was too late. And he sees that happening with AI. He thinks we might be hardwired to only react when the threat is, like, right in our faces. It's kind of chilling when you think about it. Mm. I mean, with a virus, you've got scientists working day and night, vaccines, figuring out how it spreads. With super intelligence, we're still trying to wrap our heads around the problem itself. And that's why this report is causing such a stir. It's a wake-up call. He's saying, hey, researchers, policymakers, everyone, we got to start taking this seriously. So where do we go from here? If he's right, and we're on this runaway train to super intelligence, what can we even do? The million-dollar question. Ashenbrenner says the first step is simple. Deceptively simple, really. Acknowledge it. We can't just pretend it's not happening. You're more burying our heads in the sand. Exactly. And then he says, we have to start talking to each other, like really talking. Global cooperation, sharing resources, knowledge. Because the stakes are too high for countries or companies, for that matter, to be keeping secrets. Right. Ashmerner believes that nobody should control superintelligence. No one nation, no corporation. It has to be a global effort. So the future of AI maybe even the future of humanity, it all hinges on whether we can learn to work together. It's a tall order, no question. But as Ashenbrenner makes clear, doing nothing, well, that's not an option. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. The potential of AGI, what happens if we reach superintelligence, and the really big ethical questions that come with all of this. And I think the big takeaway is the future of AI. It's not some foregone conclusion. It's up to us. We get to decide. Ashenbrenner leaves us with this. What kind of future do we want to create? What role will AI play? And are we, as a species, up to the challenge of making sure it all goes well? That's it for our deep dive today, but we want to hear your thoughts. Head to our website or find us on social media and let us know what you think. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep diving deep into the world of knowledge.